All right, I'm back to talking about odontogenic sinusitis. This time we're going to talk about how to diagnose the condition. So first off, this is a classic case, maxillary opacification on CT, a periapical lesion with some bone erosion around that molar. You scope the patient's left side and it's filled with pus and a lot of swelling. And I know in my experience and many others, this is often the nastiest infectious sinusitis we see. So how about we define it? So viewers should be aware that the definition of odontogenic sinusitis has not actually been formally established. It's not present in even recent national or international sinusitis guidelines. So after studying various aspects of this condition the last few years, I've worked closely with just a fantastic group of researchers from all over the world. And here's the definition we've come up with, which has been published in two national and international consensus statements. So, odontogenic sinusitis refers to bacterial maxillary sinusitis with or without extension to other paranasal sinuses, secondary either to adjacent infectious maxillary dental pathology or following complications from dental procedures. Okay, we have a working definition, but how do we actually diagnose it? Or what if I asked, how would you diagnose it? Well, this was precisely what Dr. Alberto Sabine and his colleagues asked at the University of Milan in Italy, and they generated a systematic review looking at this very question. And what they found after reviewing 63 odontogenic sinusitis articles was that there was significant variability in the use of criteria to diagnose odontogenic sinusitis, and only 14 of the articles required multidisciplinary evaluation to diagnose the condition. So the stars aligned, and Dr. Sabine and I found each other. We were both working toward a similar goal of trying to come up with a way to reliably diagnose this condition. So the next logical step, we put together an international consensus statement on diagnosing odontogenic sinusitis. We then selected authors from various regions of the world, including Japan, Israel, France, Germany, Lithuania, and Turkey, all based on their publication record and odontogenic sinusitis expertise. And just six months later, we have our first international multidisciplinary consensus statement on diagnosing odontogenic sinusitis, which just became available online through the International Forum of Allergy and Rhinology last week. We encourage all the viewers to download the article and read the paper in its entirety because there's a lot of great clinical content. But next I'll go over briefly the methodology used to create the consensus and then, of course, go over the key findings from the study. First, we used a modified Delphi process, which has been previously described. In total, we included 17 authors from 8 countries, which included 8 ENT surgeons or rhinologists, and 9 dental specialists. So I was the chair of the consensus, Dr. Sabine was the assistant chair, and we had three other methodologists facilitate generation of 37 clinical statements, which were based on systematic review of the ENT and dental literature, as well as expert opinion on what we felt were important clinical scenarios. Here's figure one from the consensus paper highlighting the multidisciplinary approach to diagnosing odontogenic sinusitis. First, we're going to focus on the top portion. Now, these patients are frequently seen by a variety of physicians, but most commonly otolaryngologists or dental providers. So it's really important that people understand it starts with a suspicion of odontogenic sinusitis, and then based on that suspicion, you refer these patients to the appropriate provider for disease confirmation, either of the sinus disease or the dental disease. So first, to suspect odontogenic sinusitis, there are five key clinical features that have been shown in the literature, as well as supported by expert opinion and consensus, to be more associated with odontogenic sinusitis compared to other types of sinus disease. And these five features are shown in the top right portion of this figure. It starts with the sinus CT scan. If you see unilateral maxillary sinus opacification, that's highly suspicious for odontogenic sinusitis, especially when associated with possible dental pathology on that CT. Next, if patients have unilateral middle meatal pus or purulence, that is highly suspicious for odontogenic sinusitis. And if patients report a foul smell, that's suspicious for odontogenic sinusitis. Lastly, if you find odontogenic bacteria in the sinus culture, that's also very suggestive, but not absolutely confirmatory for odontogenic sinusitis. So now, based on these features, you may or may not suspect odontogenic sinusitis. And if you do, if you're the dental provider, you should refer that patient to an otolaryngologist. And if you're an otolaryngologist, you should refer that patient to a dental provider. So next, for the otolaryngologists out there, to confirm the sinusitis of odontogenic sinusitis, consensus was reached that nasal endoscopy is the most important component for confirming the infectious sinusitis. Another very important point is that some patients with odontogenic sinusitis do not have symptoms, and therefore the presence of symptoms cannot be used as a requisite for confirming the sinusitis. That said, there are situations where patients will have a negative endoscopy or cannot undergo nasal endoscopy, 
And if those patients have suspicious symptoms or CT findings, then those patients could get a tentative confirmation of sinusitis. Now moving over to the confirmation of dental pathology for the dental providers out there. If there's a concern for endodontic disease or apical periodontitis, consensus was reached that cold pulp testing is the optimal primary diagnostic modality to assess for pulp vitality, followed by periapical imaging, which is also necessary. And for this, cone beam CT scan has been shown to be superior to periapical x-rays or orthopedic pantograms for detecting periapical lesions that often occur from apical periodontitis. That said, consensus was also achieved that both periapical x-rays and orthopantograms are acceptable primary imaging modalities when cone beam CT scan is not available. One of the most important take-home points with regard to imaging for odontogenic sinusitis is that routine bite wing dental x-rays are absolutely not acceptable in the diagnostic workup of this condition. They do not capture the periapical regions of dentition and therefore should not be considered when evaluating these patients. Now, other common odontogenic causes of this condition include oriental fistula, as well as dental implants. For these, physical examination is critical. For oriental fistula, that entails an oral examination of the site suspicious for a fistula, and if it's not obvious, you can have patients blow their nose against occluded nostrils, or you can gently probe the possible fistula site. Lastly, for patients with dental implants, the dental specialist assesses for periimplantitis or a mobile implant, as these can cause odontogenic sinusitis. So using this framework, diagnosing odontogenic sinusitis simply requires confirming the sinusitis and confirming the odontogenic pathology. If you have both, you have your diagnosis. Next, we'll utilize this diagnostic framework for some real cases. Here's a patient with right maxillary sinus opacification and overt dental pathology in the form of a periapical abscess with periapical bone erosion. Now you should already have a high suspicion for odontogenic sinusitis, but you scope the patient and you see florid pus and edema in the middle meatus, and so this confirms sinusitis, and so you refer the patient to an endodontist who performs cold pulp testing and detects pulpal necrosis, and subsequent imaging shows a periapical lesion, all consistent with apical periodontitis and therefore confirms dental pathology. And now you have confirmed sinusitis and dental pathology, which gives you the confirmed diagnosis of odontogenic sinusitis. Now that was a classic case. What about a more subtle one? Here's another case of right maxillary sinus opacification, but no overt dental pathology, just some missing periapical bone. You scope the patient and once again see pus and edema in the middle meatus, so it increases your suspicion of odontogenic sinusitis. You refer that patient to an endodontist who confirms pulpal necrosis on cold pulp testing, and periapical imaging reveals just a subtle periapical lesion, barely noticeable. Either way, you have confirmed sinusitis and dental pathology, and therefore this is another case of confirmed odontogenic sinusitis. And here's the last case example. The left maxillary sinus demonstrates mild mucosal thickening adjacent to a large periapical lesion with some bone thinning or erosion. You scope the patient and it's normal, no pus, edema, or polyps, and therefore no confirmed sinusitis. You still refer the patient to an endodontist due to the dental lesion on the scan, and they detect pulpal necrosis and the periapical lesion, and so therefore confirm dental pathology, but this is not odontogenic sinusitis because there's no confirmed infectious sinusitis. And this brings us to another very important take-home point from the study, another point that achieved consensus, and that is isolated maxillary sinus mucosal thickening adjacent to dental pathology is generally not odontogenic sinusitis. If there is any concern for odontogenic sinusitis in this situation, the patient should undergo nasal endoscopy to confirm or refute the presence of an infectious sinusitis. Now we'll end by summarizing how to diagnose odontogenic sinusitis. First off, I encourage everyone to just simply look for this condition. It's much more common than you think. To this end, there are three central tenets to diagnosing the condition. First, in the middle of this figure, we have to suspect the condition, and this is going to be based on clinical features known to be more common in odontogenic sinusitis. And then the otolaryngologist should confirm sinusitis, ideally with nasal endoscopy, and dental specialist should confirm the dental pathology. While this paradigm may seem simple, it doesn't work without close collaboration between dental providers and otolaryngologists. It's going to take time for widespread acceptance, but let's spread the word about this multidisciplinary approach to diagnosing odontogenic sinusitis.